starts right now. 1,500 troops are headed to our southern border. This comes as Title 42 set to end next week. That COVID era policy allowed Border Patrol to turn away some migrants at the border. CNN reporting that the troops are going to be there in support of the Department of Homeland Security for 90 days. They will serve in administrative roles. They will not do any law enforcement work. As of today, some 22,000 migrants were in CBP custody. In recent days, about 7,000 migrants have tried crossing the U.S. southern border daily. Officials expect that number to rise in the coming weeks. Closer to home, it took about a year and a half, but San Antonio police have finally caught up with one of the most wanted suspects. And we told you about him before, a career criminal who this time was wanted for sexually assaulting two teenage girls. Katrina Weber reports that hunt ended on the city's west side last night. His face may seem familiar because he is no stranger to the law. 48-year-old Baltimore Carlos has also been featured on KSAT 12 News before. In March, we told you he was one of the San Antonio Police Department's most wanted, the suspect in the sexual assault of two teenage girls. It allegedly happened in October of 2021, after the teens cut school and were trying to get away from Edgewood ISD police. An arrest affidavit details the case. It says the girls ran to a nearby apartment complex where they met Carlos, a stranger who was sitting in a car. The affidavit says he convinced them to get into his car, then gave them alcohol and drugs and sexually assaulted them. Both girls ended up passing out. Police identified Carlos as their suspect and nearly caught up with him last April, but he got away again. Although the affidavit mentions that the girls were on the run from Edgewood school officials, I talked to a spokeswoman here, but she wasn't able to tell me which school the girls attended or if they were even Edgewood students. Records, meanwhile, tell a lot about Carlos. As we reported in March, he has had dozens of arrests dating back to 1991 and faced nearly 50 other charges. This time, he is charged with the aggravated sexual assault of two children and evading arrest. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a fourth person now charged with murder after someone shot and killed a man inside a West Side apartment last year. Police arrested 18-year-old Corey Salas on multiple charges, including murder. Officers say that back in September of last year, Salas and three other men went into an apartment armed. This was in the 2500 block of Westward Drive, not too far from JPSA Lackland and near Highway 90, just inside Loop 410. Arrest paperwork states the men were looking for someone who had accused one of them of stealing money. The victim, Carlos Madrazo, told him to leave, and that's when one of the suspects hit him with a gun and then shot him three times in the chest. The victim died at a nearby hospital. Police already arrested three other suspects in the case. They are all charged with murder. A driver stopping right in the middle of the road last night, leading to a standoff with police officers and a shutdown highway access road. This happened on Interstate 35's access road overnight after a report that there had been a possible car crash. When police got to that spot on the northeast side, they didn't find a crash. They found a man in his car stopped right in the middle of the road. Police tell us the man made threats to officers. SAPD says he tried to start his car several times, but he couldn't get it started. Authorities say the standoff eventually ended peacefully and he was taken into custody by officers. Outside with live camera, this is a live look through Trans Guide that overturned 18 wheeler happened about nine o'clock this morning. You can see the cab has been removed, but the trailer portion is still there on the ground. This is the frontage road of I-35 at Solms Road. It looks pretty dangerous, but New Braunfels police say that no one was hurt. However, as you can see right now, crows are still on the scene because they've got to clean up a bunch of spilled fluids on the road. We have no idea what those fluids are, but we do know that uh, I-35 at Psalms Road does have this going on. So be aware if you're in the area. And as we uh, look outside, we've got some clouds starting to bubble up into a few showers. Uh, we can see that on radar, some light stuff at the moment. We'll keep an eye on this. We're not expecting a lot on the radar today, but a couple of showers certainly possible. And you can see that there south and west of San Antonio, near, near Divine and southern parts of Medina County, some light showers starting to pop. And we're also seeing a little bit of sun starting to peak out too here in San Antonio. So it promises to be a warm, humid day. Satellite picture. Shows the thicker clouds off to the west, but again, some of these clouds bubbling up into showers. 
with some uh, skies trying to clear up around the Kerrville area. Temperatures here 76, 75 here in San Antonio, 77 Pleasanton, 77 right now in Kennedy and around Bear County. We are in the mid 70s right now, mostly cloudy and very humid. Dew points jumping up into the mid 60s. That's a change from yesterday. East southeasterly winds at about 11. In our case, that 12 hour forecast, 80 degrees at 3 p.m. We'll top out at about 82. Mostly cloudy, small, small chance for shower to throughout the day and it will uh, dip down into the 70s tonight. Some storm chances had our way by Thursday. We'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A 14 year old boy recovering after being shot in the leg overnight. It happened after midnight at the Costa Valencia Apartments. That's on the city's west side on Old Highway 90. The 14-year-old shot just below the knee, taken to University Hospital. He's expected to be okay. Police say that he claimed he was being robbed by two men. However, SAPD says they didn't find a potential crime scene. A driver and a passenger will both be okay after their truck was hit by a train late last night. San Antonio police say it happened just before midnight on some tracks near the intersection of Brady Boulevard, not far from Frio City Road and Highway 90 on the city's west side. Police tell us that a male driver and a female passenger told officers that they were being tailgated by someone, and that's when they crossed the railroad tracks, and they did it in a hurry. But while they were crossing the tracks, their truck got hit by that train. No reported injuries. SAPD says neither person was intoxicated. Local Narcan training on video, hoping to make a dent of the opioid epidemic. UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing teaching people to use the life-saving medication that can reverse an overdose. The department rolling out a simple three-minute stick figure video. It shows how to use Narcan. The virtual training has been especially effective in harder to reach rural counties. The program also has sent Narcan doses to 73% of all Texas counties. The opioid epidemic is something we've been following closely as part of our series Fighting Fentanyl. You can scan this QR code for more information. It'll direct you to more information about fentanyl, what it is, how it affects your body, and how people who are addicted can get help. And coming up tonight on the Night Beat, our newest episode is all about Hope, a different program from UT Health San Antonio, receiving a big grant to help people who are suffering from an addiction. Tonight on the Night Beat, you're gonna learn how that will help people suffering from opioid addiction. Early voting for the May 6th election ends today, and there's a lot for voters to think about and decide on, from the San Antonio mayor's seat to school bonds and propositions. So far, more than 57,000 people have already voted. And those numbers are on track with last year's voting. You can cast your ballot until 8 tonight. Then Election Day is this Saturday. We've got all the details on KSAT.com. You can scan the QR code on your screen to go to the Vote 2023 section of our website. You'll find ballot information as well as a look at which voting sites are the busiest. Hey, UTSA pretty impressive on the football field. And students aren't just playing golf and tennis for fun. They are trying to bring home some hardware. Coming up. The U.S. Treasury Secretary issuing an urgent warning that the U.S. could default on its debt in just a matter of weeks. That new deadline has inspired new debt talks in Washington. ABC's Lindsay Watts tells us that lawmakers are actually reaching across the aisle to try and strike a deal. As the debt limit showdown continues between the White House and House Republicans, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is warning the U.S. could default as early as June 1st. In a letter to House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Yellen urges Congress to raise the debt ceiling as soon as possible or risk severe hardship to American families and harm to our global leadership position. America is not a deadbeat nation. President Biden has invited top congressional leaders to a high stakes meeting at the White House next Tuesday. And a source tells ABC News Speaker McCarthy has agreed to attend. It comes after House Republicans passed a debt limit bill last week, allowing for a $1.5 trillion spending cap increase. And the bill is passed. But only in exchange for nearly $5 trillion in spending cuts to Biden budget priorities, including student debt relief, veterans programs, and school grants. We've done our job. In the past, Republicans have agreed to raise the debt ceiling with no demands. And Biden says that's what needs to happen now. We pay our bills 
and we should do so without reckless hostage taking from some of the mega Republicans in Congress. If the U.S. does default on its debt, the consequences would be dire. A halt to Social Security payments and military salaries, the U.S. credit rating being downgraded, which would spike interest rates. It would also tank the stock market, hurting 401ks and other investments. The House has just 12 legislative days left this month to get this done. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. Taking a look outside with live cam, we got clouds, we've got changes. Looks like something's afoot. It's uh, feeling a lot more like spring with this heat and humidity and it sticks with us all week. The big question will be, when do we get good chances of rain? We've got a couple of windows that we picked out that we'll show you in the seven day forecast. In the meantime, the aquifer falling again. We are in pumping season, still down six tenths of a foot to 640.6. In your pollen count, Everything's low. This looks pretty similar to yesterday's count. 290 for mold, grass, oak, and pecan all low. We'll look at that seven day forecast is coming up. All right, got the heat and humidity. Justin says it feels like spring, so we need those spring showers. We could use okay. a few here and there. Always could use a shower. We South could. Texas. Maybe some thunderstorms. A few. Uh, you know, April was a great month for us. It was uh, one of the wettest months we've had in really a couple of years. Uh, and so uh, we want to keep that going right on into May. And uh, there are some opportunities ahead. It's just that this month is one that generally comes with some severe weather, too. We got to take the bad with the good. And as we look at the radar right now, it's mostly just good. Some light showers. And uh, these are going to continue to work to the north. They're not going to produce much rain, but if you're in uh, southern parts of Medina County, you may get a quick shower out of this. Uh, they'll move towards Hondo here within the next hour. Uh, again, we may see a few more of these pop up through the afternoon. It's just it's just not going to amount to much. Uh, these are uh, just some really, really late sprinkly type showers. 75 degrees right now. East southeasterly winds at about 11. Dew point is at 64. That number important because it has risen quite significantly from yesterday. This is the 24 hour uh, dew point degree change. And you see we're up 13 degrees since yesterday. That really is a pretty big change in most of the area has seen a huge uptick in moisture. And I wish I could tell you it's going somewhere. It's not. It sticks here. It stays with us all the way into next week. There's no signs of fronts or anything like that. And so we're not going to get a front to start up showers and storms. It's going to be the upper levels of the atmosphere that really help to generate some rain if we're going to see any. And as we look at the satellite picture right now, a lot of cloud cover out there. We had the morning clouds, some patchy fog in spots, and we're still seeing some thicker clouds off to the west of San Antonio underneath or over top where some of those showers are right now. Thick clouds over around uh, Del Rio and Eagle Pass, but some thinning in other spots. And so I do think we'll see some peaks of sun today. 75 degrees right now, 79 in Carissa Springs to our normal hot spot down there at 80. And uh, 74 right now in Bandera and Bolverde. Uh, looking at the forecast for today, we should uh, make it up into the 80s this afternoon. Somewhere in the low 80s here in San Antonio, but uh, certainly some upper 80s possible. Some places will be close to 90. It'll all be dependent on sun. Whoever gets the most sun will see the warmest temperatures today. And it's just a matter of where those clouds stand out. But what I can tell you is that uh, we're going to see temperatures kind of slowly step up here. We'll be near 90 by the weekend. Um, and that's not just a, a dry air 90, that's humid 90. So be prepared for that this weekend. And that's going to come with some thunderstorm chances as dew points stay really high, 60s and even some 70 degree dew points that puts us in the oppressive category. So again, without any fronts, this kind of air mass just stays right where it is. We're watching a low off the west coast of California that's starting to throw some disturbances towards the middle part of the country. It doesn't make a lot of headway off to the east, but the way it's set up, we get a, a pattern where we get flow out of the south and west, and oftentimes that can bring little disturbances in that'll kick off some showers and storms. It's just hard to pinpoint exactly when and where in this kind of flow. So we know today it'll be isolated stuff generally off to our west, and I think that's probably the case tomorrow, but we get a little stronger disturbance rolling through on Thursday that will initially kick off some storms to the west of San Antonio. And if uh, these models are correct, which uh, they're starting to come into a little better agreement, we'll get those thunderstorms to kind of form into a cluster of storms that may work their way towards San Antonio Thursday night. Again, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where 
uh, these clusters of storms will move. But that's the general idea. And right now we have a 40% chance of storms in the forecast. The greatest risk for severe weather will be west of San Antonio, where those storms initially develop. Places like Rock Springs, Del Rio, Eagle Pass. And uh, that's something we'll be watching Thursday. We've still got a couple days before that happens. So 83 tomorrow, 84 on Thursday with that 40% chance of rain. And we're going to keep some 30% chances in there Friday and Saturday. If storms do pop up, there is the possibility of strong to severe weather. And then some smaller chances Sunday and Monday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. A local boxer trying to reestablish himself in the ring. We've got his story coming up as he gets ready for another bout. And it's not just football at UTSA. Several other athletes in several other sports showing some top-notch skills coming up. Big fight this weekend for San Antonio's Kendo Castaneda. It's like his second life in the sport, and he is now a headliner this weekend. He's got a second life in boxing, and he'll have the headline. Kendo Tremendo has been working out at Leja's Boxing Fitness on Broadway. He'll headline the Davies Entertainment event called Viva La Brawl this Friday. Cinco de Mayo at the Boeing Center at Techport. This will be an eight-round welterweight bout for Kendo, and this marks his first fight in 2023. Man, the Techport is a great spot. It's amazing. And just to know that I'm an event there, well, I'm like starstruck myself, but I'm ready. I'm, re I'm ready for eight rounds. The schedule for eight rounds. I'm ready for an eight round fight. If you're in San Antonio, Texas and Cinco de Mayo, the Tech Port Arena is where you want to be at. At one point, Kendo had lost five straight fights. Then he fought in the last chance tournament in Florida. He won two bouts and fought in the final match. He feels as determined as ever to prove to his hometown fans that despite those losses, he is not ready to hang up the gloves just yet. It wasn't my last chance. It was a great tournament. I fought great fighters. I came in as a runner-up, but it wasn't my last chance. And that's why I'm, I'm, ba I'm coming back with this fight. Tickets are still on sale at DaviesEntertainment.com and at BoeingCenterTechPort.com. Also, this coming Saturday, Canelo will be fighting in Mexico for the first time since 2011. He will face John Ryder for Canelo's super middleweight belts. One of our own getting ready to tee it up. UTSA star golfer Cameron Carrion will be playing in the San Antonio Regional. The tournament will be hosted by the Roadrunners and San Antonio Sports next week at TPC San Antonio Oaks course. Cameron is one of six individual golfers assigned to the SA Regional after earning an NCAA postseason berth. Talked about being pumped up. The Incarnate Word High School grad thrilled to represent UTSA and SA. People always ask me how it feels to represent UTSA, but it truly is it's coming from the bottom of my heart. It's one of the most special things to me because like I just I grew up here in San Antonio. I would love I miss San Antonio in my own head. <laughs> I miss San Antonio. I would never leave UTSA. Like uh, if I could do it all over again, I would come straight back to UTSA. I I live and breathe San Antonio and it just means a lot to me just to be able to represent our university UTSA. Golfers will tee off Saturday in that regional, May 8th through the 10th at TPC San Antonio. And staying with the Roadrunners, former UTSA kicker Jared Sackett was invited to Denver Broncos rookie minicamp. He joins Clifford Chapman, uh, Ofatu Maka, and Corey Mayfield Jr. as undrafted Roadrunners to get a shot at the NFL. And congratulations to the UTSA men's tennis team who earned a spot in the 64-team field in the NCAA Division I championships being held in Austin. They are 41st ranked, and they will be opening up with number 37 Pepperdine at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Major League Baseball, Houston opened up a three-game homestand against the San Francisco Giants yesterday. The bottom of the seventh, Astros sent 10 hitters to the plate. They scored five runs. Mauricio Dubon doubled to right to put the Astros up 3-2. Astros take it 7-3 in their Space City uniforms. Love those unis. And in the NBA playoffs yesterday, the 76ers played at the Celtics game one of that Eastern Conference semifinal. Philly without Joel Embed, Embiid because of a sprained right knee. The game saw 14 ties, 16 lead changes. James Harden gave Philly the lead for good with a 117-115 lead with 8.5 seconds to go via a pull-up three.
He tied his career playoff high. He had 45 points last night. The sisters stunned the Celtics in Boston, 119 to 115. And now they have home court advantage. Embiid needs a new hoodie. Did you see all the holes in that? <laughs> Probably the thing now, isn't it? It's a trend, I guess. Yeah. Mike and Fiona getting their hands dirty for today's home improvement show. And technology, it's used by many, but not the same for everybody. Today at 5, we're asking the question, can technology be biased from the facial recognition on your phone to certain medical devices? Marilyn Morris is going to take a dive into the things we use every day and how the impact is not always to our benefit. A judge found former Minneapolis police officer Tutau guilty of an additional charge for the killing of George Floyd back in 2020. He kept back bystanders while two fellow officers held down the unarmed black man and Derek Chauvin pressed his knee into Floyd's neck. The new conviction is for aiding and abetting second degree manslaughter. Tutau is already serving a three and a half year sentence for violating Floyd's civil rights. After a separate case last year, his sentencing hearing for the extra conviction is scheduled for August. You don't see this very often. A dust storm in Illinois causing a deadly highway pileup. At least six people were killed in this. Interstate 55, where the crash has occurred, a reopened now in both directions. The first of the victims being identified. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. A chaotic scene on I-55 in Illinois Monday, at least 70 vehicles crashing, six people killed and dozens more injured. And I saw car after car and semi just that were, you know, had run into each other and there was fires and smoke and it was crazy. And it got so bad that I had like I couldn't see uh, anything out my window. The crashes began around 11 a.m. Drivers blinded by thick dust clouds. Approximately 30 commercial motor vehicles and 40 to 60 passenger cars were involved. At this time, we have reports of more than 30 people being transported to multiple area hospitals. ABC's Stephanie Ramos on the was. scene. Take a look at this. This was a truck caught fire, completely burned. It's unrecognizable, but if you look closely, you can see that this is the shell of what was a seat. Officials say the dust storm was caused by excessive winds blowing dirt from farm fields across the highway. I've never seen a dust storm that bad and that persistent in my lifetime. Once I got into it, I couldn't hardly see it all. At its worst, you couldn't see uh, 20 feet, maybe at the most. Police identifying one victim as an 88-year-old woman. They say her daughter was driving. She survived and was hospitalized. Those injured are 2 to 80 years old. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home with our weather outside with live cam and I shot of some, they look like dark, ominous clouds, but they aren't really that dark and not really that ominous, apparently. Not really. Not it's really. human. Well, we do have a couple of showers out there, but nothing that's uh, imminent here in San Antonio. Eddie, you're right. It is very humid out there. Very sticky. A lot of humidity surged in overnight. I want to first start with a big picture here across the country. Pretty interesting setup. We've got a big low over the Great Lakes, and that's producing rain and snow up there across the northeast. In fact, some heavy snow yesterday across parts of Michigan. That is moving away, but we're watching this next low pressure, which is setting up across the west coast. And out ahead of it, we're getting disturbances flowing through Texas. And actually, we've got a few showers uh, right now moving through the Lone Star State. Temperatures in the 70s here. And by the way, underneath those lows, it's chilly. 43 Cleveland, 47 in New York. 53 in San Francisco, not very May like uh, here in Texas. We're kind of caught in the middle, not terribly warm, but certainly warmer. 78 in Laredo, 84 right now in Brownsville. And let me show you the radar real quick. Uh, you see some of these uh, showers starting to pop up here, kind of a, a broken line more or less from Uvalde to Southern Medina County down in Atascosa County. Again, nothing that's very heavy, but we could see a very quick downpour develop so far. Nothing here in San Antonio. Our forecast for today does call for a 10% chance of rain. Temperatures right around 82 for a high this afternoon and then down into the 70s tonight. Humidity sticks with us and rain chances. Well, they kick up by the end of the week for sure. We'll have more on that uh, forecast picture for you and where the rain may be heaviest coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. The U.S. Surgeon General next task is to tackle loneliness and isolation. Dr. Vivek Murthy says even before the COVID-19 pandemic, about half of adults reported experiencing loneliness. Isolation and loneliness are linked to sleep problems, inflammation, immune changes, pain, depression, and anxiety. 
But Murthy says social connection can help make us more resilient. He's creating a framework which includes six pillars like calling for more pro-connection public policies, increasing education on the benefits of social connection, and reforming digital environments. Turning up the volume on the TV, having trouble hearing in a noisy room, science shows hearing loss may be more common than you think. Plus, ABC's Justin Finch reports that hearing loss could also be a sign of other health issues. Age-related hearing loss is not a new problem, and the FDA is now allowing over-the-counter hearing aids, making treating hearing loss easier than ever. A recent study from Harvard found that one in three people aged 65 to 74 suffer from hearing loss, and many of them might not even know it. Signs of hearing loss may be turning up the volume more, having trouble hearing in a noisy room, or asking others to repeat information. While these signs may seem subtle, experts now think hearing loss can be serious and may negatively affect your brain. Scientists say that people who have hearing loss may have trouble creating new memories. They're also at increased risk for depression, social isolation, and being less active. But luckily, there are solutions. Doctors say one of the best things you can do is to get your ears checked with a hearing test to see if you could benefit from a hearing aid. Hearing aids have been shown to improve memory, concentration, and attention. They can even protect against fall-related injuries and decrease the risk of being diagnosed with dementia. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. 5,000 tons of potentially harmful fumes from dozens of consumer products were emitted out of California in 2020. That's according to a new study. The fumes were volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, that turn into gas when exposed to air and sunlight. The most common VOC was formaldehyde, which appears in nail polish, shampoo, and makeup. Some VOCs have been linked to asthma and cancer, as well as damaging to livers, kidneys, or the central nervous system. For the study, researchers used data from the California Air Resources Board. Experts say finding safer alternatives is key to avoiding potentially toxic fumes. Environmental groups now suing the Federal Aviation Administration following last month's SpaceX launch. It was a problem. The Starship rocket lifted off the launch pad but then spewed debris over miles and then it exploded over the Gulf of Mexico four minutes into the flight. The federal lawsuit says that the agency authorized the launch without complying with federal environmental law. It also claims the FAA didn't analyze the environmental impact of a launch. The lawsuit says the area around the launch is essential to habitat to federally protected species, including the endangered ocelot. The FAA licenses commercial rocket launches and gave the green light for the launch attempt after more than a year back and forth. Hollywood coming to a stop. For the first time in 15 years, TV and movie writers are declaring a strike. The Writers Guild of America says nearly 12,000 unionized writers will strike today. This is a result of a fight for fair pay in the streaming era. Negotiations between studios and writers began back in March. A new contract has not been reached yet. Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae backed mortgages are about to change. The Federal Housing Finance Agency making changes to mortgage fees and those changes take effect this month. With the changes, borrowers can lower credit scores, who have lower credit scores that is, will see less of a penalty. But if your credit score is higher, you're gonna see more price tiers. And in some cases, your fees are gonna increase. The strength of some nasty weather on full display as a car is flung into the air. What the person inside the vehicle is saying after, yes, they survived the experience. And the rise of a local football star to turning young men into stars on the football field coming up in sports. A father and son swept out to sea. Their rescue, though, not only caught on camera, but it also serves as a good warning as more folks are planning to go to the beach.